Moira might just be the most hated hero in Overwatch. She's deemed no skill, she's annoying, and she stat farms. But what if I told you she's the easiest support hero to not just play, but to carry your team to wins, especially through the lower ranks. But you have to play her right. Moira by design racks up large numbers on both damage and healing, but that doesn't always mean you're playing her properly. So listen up. Moira has two play styles, both effective and both needed in different situations. She can anchor down your tank and be an ocean of healing, but she can also dive in and target squishies. So let's break down her abilities and how they fit in. Moira gains heal charge by sucking enemies, not shields. If there's any Bronze 5 Moira players here, I have a strong feeling you sit there sucking Ryan's shield all day, thinking you're doing something. I'm sorry to tell you, but you're not. So let's talk suck prioritization. In the heat of a team fight, under most circumstances, you should be just a few meters behind your tank. From that position, the suck list goes enemy healers first, then DPS, then tanks. Always be looking for opportunities to look past the enemy tank in your face and suck the squishies behind them. This is for two reasons. The more obvious reason being that your damage is far more effective on lower HP targets, but the less obvious reason is you gain 30% less alt charge when you're damaging tanks. This is especially important for Moira as she locks on her damage so sucking a squishy takes no more skill or effort than the tanks in front of them. As for healing, Moira's click heal travels through teammates. Capitalizing on this is the fastest way to heal your team and to gain alt charge. You gotta strafe left and right constantly trying to line yourself up so that you're healing as many targets in the same line. This will save you heal charge and time. Balancing between sucking and healing to always maintain a healthy meter is key. Focus on switching back and forth constantly, as Moira's healing has an overtime lingering effect. You can burst heal, then switch back to sucking and let the lingering heal finish topping up the target. Additionally, quick tapping your suck will charge your heal meter faster than just holding. You'll do less damage, but this is especially useful when your gauge is on empty. That's something that I feel like a lot of Moira players don't actually know. Suck the right targets, use your heal with intention and thought and never let your meter run out. Moira is the only support that doesn't have any type of conventional utility like Sleep or Suzu, but what she does have is the highest potential healing output in the game. That's her utility. And if you aren't abusing that, you're playing the character wrong. Combining click healing with a healing orb allows your team to endure damage thresholds that other supports just can't sustain. Up until a couple patches ago, I would have told you to almost never throw damage orbs. However, now that her damage orbs charge her resource meter, there are more opportunities where you can throw them in. Throw a heal orb when you need a maximum burst of healing to sustain yourself, a target, or if the target is out of reach. Otherwise, utilize damage orbs to gain alt charge top off your heal meter and tickle the enemies. Never just throw an orb because it came off cooldown. Think about which orb is best and when and where you should place it. If you're in an open area, aim it at the toes of your target. This will keep it in range of them for longer. If you're at a choke point, small room, or anywhere with walls or corners, find the best angle to bounce the orb so that it stays within the intended area for as long as possible. Personally, I was always good at trigonometry, so I find this easy. If you don't, you should start throwing a protractor around your house. Also, I swear bro, tanks especially treat healing orbs like moths to a lamp. If you want your tank to walk in a certain direction or area, throw a healing orb and they will follow. As Moira, you actually do have some control as to where your team is going to go. So think about how to maximize the value of each orb toss, where your team is, and where your team wants to go. Fade is among the best escape tools in the game. Although it catches less hate now as somehow they made an even better one with Kiriko's TP, pretty much proving power creep is real. There isn't too much to say about this ability except use it wisely. It's Moira's get out of jail free card, so if you aren't in jail, don't play it. Use it as a cleanse, use it to escape enemy ultimates, and when the time is right, use it to dive into the enemy backline. In the intro I mentioned Moira has two play styles. Fade is where her alternative dive style comes into play. When to dive is the hardest decision Moira players have to make. Yet, it's really quite simple. Only ever dive with Fade if you are nearly 100% certain you are going to survive the interactions coming, since you burned your escape tool going in. Pay attention to what cooldowns your dive e target has used before you jump them. The best example of this is a very common Moira mistake, diving an Ana who still has nade. You will never beat Ana in a 1v1 in that scenario, but Ana without nade is a very vulnerable target. Same with Suzu, same with Baptiste's cooldowns, same with Cassidy's grenade. There are many characters that can be very vulnerable to you pouncing on them with a damage orb suck melee combo, but there are also many abilities that repel you very easily. Moira is a character who can outlive her team in every every fight, but can also throw her life away instantly with poor decision making. And it all comes down to awareness of where vulnerable targets are positioned and what cooldowns they possess. Fade is your best friend. Just like orbs, think about every use and keep it in your pocket for when you need it. 
Finally, let's talk about Mora's ultimate, Coalescence. Being one of the fastest charging alts in the game, I recommend using it pretty much off cooldown. There isn't a perfect moment since it's not a very powerful alt, but it does have its uses. If you can maintain line of sight with a squishy character, you can often leech him down. And when combined with a damage orb, it can actually be very scary for the heroes that don't have the utility to deal with it. Try to always throw a damage orb, then cancel the animation instantly by pressing your alt key. This will simply just maximize your damage output. By the time your alt is finished, you'll have another orb off cooldown ready to go. And remember, Coalescence damages and heals at the same time, so make an attempt to line teammates up with the enemies to take advantage of both aspects. Tell your tank when you're going to use your ultimate so they can run forward, allowing you to get that effective lineup. Moira is an extremely flexible healer who can be played with essentially any other support hero. She's not the flashiest hero and she doesn't require a high level of mechanical skill, but her consistent mass healing output combined with her ability to pounce vulnerable targets makes her in my opinion the easiest hero to climb through the lower ranks as long as you're smart. You just have to hone down on your efficiency and decision making. As a support player it's necessary that you're flexible with your hero pool, so if you haven't already I highly recommend you get used to playing Moira. She's a menace in the lower ranks and underrated in the higher ranks. With the true main tanks like Ryan starting to see more playtime this season, there's ample opportunity to find value with everyone's most hated healer. Hey, if you made it this far, I appreciate you watching the whole video. I'd actually love to get your input on which support hero I should cover next. As always, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one and come chill on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays. Appreciate everyone watching. Peace.